What's up, people? How's everyone doing today? My name is Jordan McCracken Foster, and I'm a teaching artist here at ArtProf. And I'm here today with Deep D Menon, and we are going to do a Procreate Draw Along, and we're going to be finishing up some landscapes that we did in our previous streams. Uh, our prof has lots of great tutorials and critiques in professional development, and it's all 100% free. So if you want to turn your artistic weakness into your strength, definitely check us out. And feel free, guys, to draw along with us in any medium. Obviously, the both of us are using Procreate, but you guys can use acrylic or ink or gouache or whatever it is that you have. And uh, we also have reference photos, um, the links to our reference photos in the YouTube description below. So we're going to get to drawing now. So what are you going to be doing, Deep D? What are you working on? So I, a couple days ago, earlier this week, I can't really remember, um, I did what you're seeing on the screen now with our prof TA cat. Um, and it was for an alien land or fantasy landscape, um, which you can check that video out and see us draw this and Kat drew the one on the screen that you're seeing right now, which is really fun. And now that we're continuing landscapes, I decided to bring this back up. And I, I was having a lot of issues with this piece when I was making it. I felt like I really didn't like the composition. I really wanted to incorporate a lot of different references that I had, but I felt like the composition was kind of limiting me to just focusing on these large mushrooms I have on screen. Um, and then I wasn't really getting the textures I wanted. I'm kind of a noob at Procreate, so I wasn't feeling like I knew how to use the tools that I was, like the brushes I was using. So by the end of the stream, I was kind of just messing around and like playing around to figure out how the sky could look more cloudy. And um, so now what I'm doing is, Clara really pushed me to keep working on this one. So I am kind of doing a 50-50. I don't want to keep working exactly on this canvas specifically, but I'm going to keep the same composition and push myself to like figure something out with this. But I have um, this pencil, this orange pencil going on top and I am using this basis, basic composition and redrawing on top of it. And then I'm going to jump in. So I'm making some edits um, really quickly to the composition and to the content. Um, and to the space and maybe figuring out like atmospheric perspective a little bit more. And then um, and then I'm gonna jump into coloring and maybe since you're the wizard, Jordan, I might ask you for some tips on brushes to use to get the kind of textures I'm looking for. But yeah, how about you? What are you, uh, what are you working on? Um, so I'm fixing up this landscape that, uh, that I started. I think I was also working with Kat, now I think about it. <laughs> and so, it's just the, a desert landscape and what I've done, um, you guys can't see it, but I pulled up like several references. One is from, uh, actually I can show you one. Um, one is from one of my favorite shows, Legend of Korra, where they have these really cool deserty background paintings. So I'm having that on the screen. And then I have some stuff from um, Atlantis, Lost Empire and Nathan Fowkes who worked on Prince of Egypt. So I'm just trying to see how far I can take this thing. Cause uh, it's not, not uh, angry, you know, fully realized just yet. Cause I only worked on it for like an hour, but <laughs> you know, we'll see how it goes. We will see. That's how I feel too. I felt like the one I was doing wasn't fully realized, but I'm getting to a point. I really want to show. I know on the stream that Cat and I did, she added these chickens in her piece, which really helped show scale. And I want to show that these mushrooms are actually gigantic. And I think it kind of does that with these like landscapes pushed in the background, but. I want to figure out a way to show scale in a fun way in mine. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I haven't drawn like this, just like landscapes in a really long time, especially spending this much time on one because as an animator, I feel like I'm always doing like really simple or easy to draw flat, simple landscapes because that, the backgrounds are generally not what the focus is on. Mm -hmm. um, so this is like kind of a challenge for me and having this time to step away from the piece and have a self critique has been really interesting. Yeah, so so when you do animation, do you ever do your own like layout, like, you know, positioning everything where they're supposed to be in the scene before you go in or you just kind of go straight into it? Yeah, I, I, I do lay things out. I do come do like a storyboard for most shots um, where I 
figure out what I want things to look like visually and um, the basic composition. And then I kind of tweak it once I'm working in the final um, Photoshop layer or whatever. But um, yeah, I, I definitely do. It's just like the difference between that and say this is that I'm really spending a lot of time here, whereas I would never spend this much time on an animation because like I wouldn't, A, I'm a team of one. I'm not like Studio Ghibli. <laughs> um, That's true. And B, like the movement of like the character I'm working with would be more important to me um, to spend time on with like the limited schedule I probably have than, um, than just having like a beautiful background that will be on screen for like three seconds. Mm -hmm. That makes sense. I get that. I want to work more on backgrounds anyway. So this is like really good practice for me because it shows yeah. me how much more I need to grow and develop. But um, yeah, because you can't just yeah. be just in an empty space all the time. <laughs> you guys should have seen my reaction when I logged into the stream before we went live. When I saw what Jordan was working on, I literally was like, I'm starting over completely. I, <laughs> like, I can't work with this. Oh, <laughs> This is too beautiful. Mine is too ugly. You know, I, I feel the same way. I, I guess the way you feel about mine <laughs> is the exact opposite of how I feel about it. Cause I'm just like, Ugh, there's issues. Like there's, there's so many problems with it. I don't know what to do. And We're all our own worst critics. Yeah, it's not fun. And I'm finding like all these like random things that just popped up in my painting out of nowhere. I'm like, what the heck is this? I don't remember painting you here. So. Yeah, same. I'm like, what was I thinking? <laughs> Do you feel like you would ever use the background you're painting in one of your animations? Or you think this is just more of a one and done type of deal? I could definitely use this. I think it's partially inspired by that music video I made, um, like the desert-y landscape. Oh, we have a question from Clara. Jordan, what are you doing right now? I'm so confused by your technique. <laughs> Honestly, I'm not sure either. Some things uh, <laughs> some things are just me cleaning up um, random layers, because uh, there was like a random spot that was in the background of my sky, and I was like, no, gotta get rid of it. Um, right now, I'm just kind of smoothing out the uh some of these textures because i have these very blocky shapes and i like the blocky shapes but they're a little too sharp for me so right now mm -hmm. i'm just kind of experimenting with brushes and seeing uh what feels right um because i also have to get used to these brushes for one um along with getting used to just painting environments inappropriate so are you using a new sorry if you already said this i was like concentrating are you <laughs> using a new um brush pack that you've never used before? Um, I haven't used it in Procreate. I have this uh, brush set from Patrick O'Keefe, who's the art director on Spider-Man Into the Spider-Verse. And of course. a lot of <laughs> like, well, I found, I found it on uh, Learn Squared, a, a website where you can take courses and stuff. But he actually just released his brushes for this environment painting course that he did. And I was like, I will take this and I will learn from them. So I know how to use them in Photoshop really well but it's a, it feels a little weird in, uh, in Procreate. So just getting used to that and yeah, just seeing what works, because I don't know, <laughs> I'm trying. It's very humbling, or it's, it's nice to hear that you also have a difficult time in Procreate sometimes, because when Kat and I were drawing, we were like, oh, I wish Jordan was here to help us. <laughs> well, I, I mean, I know how to use the tool fine, but it's just like, sometimes, I don't know how to make the art look better. Like I can guess or I, I have a good assumption, but sometimes I just, it's just a struggle and I'm just trying to figure it out like everyone else. So, you know, I'm very much on the same page as you and Kat and you know, Clara and stuff sometimes. I wouldn't say same page, but well, <laughs> I, I understand what you're trying to say. <laughs> Fine. I was trying yeah, to that we're in completely you know. different chapters of the same story, maybe, but uh, <laughs> I mean, if you don't want to take it, I gave you a handout, but that's fine. <laughs> you don't have to take what I say. <laughs> so, are you just redoing your your line work right now, for the most part? I'm I'm trying to just quickly find. I'm already more happy with this composition. I think that there's more of the interesting plants that I pulled for references and just, you know, um, I'm already happier with it. And it's, I'm, I think at this point, I'm going to stick with the rest that I have. 
Um, but yeah, I'm just redrawing my lines a little bit. I'm gonna just go and then I'm gonna um, hop back into coloring and adding textures and stuff. Yay. Yay. A good lesson that you sometimes will not love what you do on first go. And so it's good to step away and not get too frustrated and revisit it and you might have some ideas. And sometimes you need Prof Lou to encourage you to keep working and not just start over completely. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, that, that gives me a, a good question for you is uh, when there's a serious deadline but you don't feel inspired, like how do you push past that? Oh, um, I don't know. I'm good at just having, I'm good at just being like, I, you gotta do it, deep D, you just gotta do it. But I think having other people look at it, um, doing self critique is great, but also having a community of people who can give you some group critique, I think is always really helpful. So I tend to ask people for help because them, you know, giving me a different perspective is always um, useful for me. We have a question from Clara saying, Jordan, will you add any figures, animals, the way Kat added chickens to her landscape? I I don't know. Um, if I do add anything, it probably won't be chickens. I don't think that would work for this scene, but I'll figure something out. <laughs> I, th I think maybe like a little town in the background on the lower right will probably work. Whether or how much I'll get to, and the stream is beyond me, but I might add some little something, something. Well, something, something. It's funny, these streams are like longer than our other ones, but I feel like they go by so fast because we're like so into the drawing and then it's like, what? Yeah. That was, that's how much I got done in an hour and a half. I agree. I remember the first time we started doing these, I was like, man, an hour and, hour and 20 minutes, like, how are we gonna do that? We're used to, you know, half the time, if anything, and then, that first stream just went by like that. And so it's just like, whoa. Now I'm used to it, but it, it does feel a little strange sometimes. Yeah, it's so funny. Blue is saying, I love the new sketch that Deep D is doing. It's much more interesting composition than the previous one. I agree. And I think, you know, what I like, but why I like that I stuck with it, but also reworked it is I knew I would be frustrated if I just continued working with this one that we see on the screen. But I knew that there was a kernel of something interesting there, and it really didn't take me very long to figure out what would make it more interesting. So, you know, just 15 minutes of reworking, doing some self critique, stepping away, I think is always a good idea. Um, and yeah, thanks, Blue. I'm glad you like it, because I do too. I have no idea what I'm doing. <laughs> Is that a little city in the background? Yeah. I was also thinking of adding, like, I want to add something to show scale. So I'm trying to figure out what that could be. Oh, maybe instead of these mushrooms I have in the front, I could have, like, little homes, little houses or something. Yeah. yeah. I'm, I'm feeling a little lost. But uh, I'll figure it out somehow. I'll figure it out. <laughs> we'll all figure it out somehow. Yeah. It's just the process I'm learning. I, I constantly, I feel like growing up or looking at other artists and seeing them on YouTube or wherever, I'd be like, man, they have everything figured out. Sort of like how a kid looks at adults. They're like, wow, this person has everything figured out. They have a certain, you know, they always have time to feed me and clothe me and do all this stuff. And then when you actually get there, you're like, I don't know what the heck I'm doing. I'm just, <laughs> I'm just trying to make it work. Prof Lou is asking, Deep D, why did you choose the photo of the pink mushrooms? Honestly, I just really liked the texture that they have. Um, they have this like kind of wrinkly, they look like tongues almost. And this was a reference I chose for the previous stream, which was the fantasy alien landscape. And I was really interested in picking textures that just look kind of like bizarre. Um, so it was a texture that was drawn to me, uh, that I was drawn to, and maybe it was drawn to me too. <laughs> um, and the color was cool. I don't know if I'm gonna stick with that color, but it is also kind of like a unique, bizarre color that you don't really see in like nature that often. Um, also, I like drawing things that are kind of like gloopy and big and 
This is kind of gloopy and big. I like that word, gloopy. That's, that's a fun word. <laughs> Seven Angelic says, I'm kind of imagining a spaceship hovering above Jordan's landscape like it's a desert landing pad. That could be really cool. That could really like set it apart too. That would. I let's see if I have time to paint that in because <laughs> I'm still trying to figure out this rock. And rocks are not supposed to be as difficult as I'm making them out to be. <laughs> it's a very important rock though. It's yeah. A rock. Yeah, it's a it's a major, it's a big deal, guys. A major Major rock. <laughs> Major rock. Yeah. Major rock. You, do you ever watch us? Uh, you watched SpongeBob as a kid, right? Oh, my favorite. Do you life. remember? I think it was the pizza delivery episode where SpongeBob was crying and he's like, it's not just a boulder, it's a rock. <laughs> he just was like super excited about it. Do you remember that? Yeah. And then he ends up being able to drive it. Yeah, that was epic. <laughs> I literally brought that up to some the episode to someone because it was really windy, and I was like, "Oh my god!" I felt like that episode in SpongeBob where I'm like, where he's like carrying the pizza with Squidward, and it's so windy, and he's like, "The Krusty Krab pizza," and like it's like the wind is just blowing, and it's miserable. Yeah. Um, and they had no idea what I was talking about, and I was like so disappointed. I would be too. I would be too. That's like such a huge part of my childhood. And, you know, I stopped watching SpongeBob in like 2004, but I will, I remember just a couple of months ago, actually, I was visiting my mom and she has some service where it has like 24 seven channels of whatever. And there's a 24 seven SpongeBob channel. And I was like, I'm curious, I want, you know, I wonder if it's still funny. And they were showing the, all the old episodes from like 1999 to like 2003. They're so hilarious. I was just dying. They're so funny. And they're just so concise. Like, they're so tight. They're just each 10 minutes. Yep. And oh, I, yeah. I mean, I think SpongeBob was one of the main reasons I became an animator. Like, that show, Ed, Ed, and Eddie, Ren and Stimpy, like, they were all so. But SpongeBob, I can watch SpongeBob any day of my life. And yeah. I'm my, so my, yeah. my mom wouldn't let me watch Ed, Ed, and Eddie growing up. It is, that 90s Cartoon Network vibe was definitely a little <laughs> risque, questionable. Yeah. Well, part of it is just my personality. I would literally imitate everything I saw. Oh. Um, that, did I ever tell you the time I ran over someone on a snowboard when I was five? Ever tell you about that? No. <laughs> so everyone's on the streams like, what? Uh, I'll, oh, I'll, I'll tell the story after I read this comment from Vanessa. It says, uh, I love these compositions like Deep D's that there is something really big in the first plane, the picture, but I can never do a good one like that. That's interesting. I wonder why you feel like you could never do a good one. I think that you really should give it a shot and do some thumbnails and try it out. I actually have, let me see if I can pull it up. Where is it? Um, I have my old thumbnail. Oh man, I have to put all of these off. But um, I really think you could. I think it's all about just like experimenting and playing around. Um, this was the thumbnail I originally did and it's obviously not the same, but um, there's a lot of progression. And I think you just have to like, I think you already know what you're looking for, which is having something really big in the foreground and just play around and play with scale and don't worry about not having it look great the first time around because obviously as you can see that was what happened with me um you should definitely give it a shot and you should draw along with us right now and post it later i think i think you'll be surprised um that you could make something awesome yeah definitely um uh, oh oh so <laughs> i'll tell you the story real quick um i was five years old and we went to big bear which is a place in california where it snows a lot and I remember I was snowboarding, I was five years old. And uh, on the way down, I was going by myself and I saw this person just laying there in the snow. And I was on the way down, I was like, I could jump this guy like I saw in a Goofy movie because Goofy's son, Max, he was like the skateboarder, you know, you know, extreme type of guy. And I was like, I could totally do it. It'd be so awesome. Everyone would be like cheering for me and all that. <laughs> <laughs> and so I practiced on the way down. I assumed that I would gotten enough height, uh, and I completely crashed into him, pummeled the guy, and I got a lecture 
from my uncle. He was like, Jordan, don't ever do that. And meanwhile, in my mind, I'm thinking, I don't understand. I practiced on the way down. I got my, my momentum and blah, blah, blah. <laughs> and it just, it just went down south real quick. Oh my goodness. That is so funny. That's like, oh my gosh. I Being a parent is something that scares me a lot. But like hearing those <laughs> stories where I'm like, oh my God, my kid did what? <laughs> I would have a panic attack. I, I mean, I think the guy was okay. <laughs> we have a comment from Blue that says, what is Jordan thinking when he selects the colors and adding that to the rock? Is he looking for lighter shades of the same color? Is he thinking about where light and shadow should be? That's a really good question. I also would like to know the answer to that. Uh, yeah, so what I'm doing right now is um, when I first started today, I felt like the pictures were too saturated. I don't know how well it's showing up on everyone's screen, but to me it was just a little too saturated and there was not enough uh there's not enough balance of you know of consistency with texture and everything and so what i like to do personally is every time i go a little darker i like to sat put a little bit more saturation in the colors uh when i go lighter i like to uh, desaturate it and so i'm just kind of mixing mixing and matching those as i go in the painting for this huh that's really interesting i never really thought about working like that yeah, it's it's helpful because I find that like a lot of sa uh, shadows tend to be more saturated and light often is kind of bleached out. It's bleaching everything out. And so thinking of it that way helps a lot. And uh, I think it'll keep it from looking stale if you constantly are shifting things, uh, not just with light, but with color and saturation. And it makes it a little bit more vibrant too. That's a lot awesome. to interpret it. <laughs> Do you find yourself also thinking about saturation when you're doing like atmospheric perspective, for example? Uh, yeah, I, th I, look, I think about saturation like every single time I'm working on something because it's, it's one of those things that uh, can really make or break a painting. Like one of the things that is very typical of uh, young artists or, or amateur artists is that oftentimes they'll put too much saturation in everything and it starts to like cause blindness for me. And so I try to tone it down and figure out where can I put this to make it work. Mm -hmm. Jaden is saying, I'm trying to find a way to animate traditionally because I don't have a digital art thing. I have to be creative and design an animation desk. Deep D, this one's for you. Ooh, all right. Um, the question is, I'm trying to animate traditionally because I don't, okay. I, I'll have to be creative and design an animation desk. I'm not sure what you mean by an animation desk. Do you mean like a peg bar and shooting down? What I We actually have some really awesome animation stop motion tutorials here and hopefully in the future we'll do some like flip books and 2D animation ones. You really don't need anything super intense. Um, I actually shoot most of my traditional things on my iPhone. So if you have a smartphone, you can use an app called iStop Motion. Um, and you really just need like a what am I trying to say? Some sort of like tripod esque thing that can hold your camera stable. Um, and that should be enough. And then some even lighting for, for what you're shooting. But, you know, don't worry. I think animation a lot of times seems daunting because you need like the tools and you need this and that, but don't worry so much about that. I, I think um, focus more on the movement and the and the fun of the thing that you're creating. And then I think if you have a smartphone or just a way to photograph it, you can use an app like I stop motion, or I'm sure there's another one that's for free um, that can really help you out. But um, I hope that's helpful. We, you should check out our stop motion tutorials because um, I have some awesome tips in those of like how you can work on a budget or work with what you have around the house to create some really fun animations. Yeah, when I was in high school, I actually made a one minute animated short done traditionally. And all I had was a peg bar. I had some animation paper. Um, thankfully, for some reason, there was an art store like 10 minutes walking from my house that happened to sell like pre like already pre-punched animation paper, which is very ran random to me. I'd never seen that before in the store. And a light box or a light table. That was it. Um, yeah. But I mean, I don't even think you don't even need all that. That's like awesome that you had all of that. I was thinking actually the other day about like some projects I did in high school and I was like uh, thinking about I, like I didn't even have a laptop in high school and I, like I didn't have a smartphone like smartphones weren't really like there 
yeah. um, accessible for everyone. And I was like, imagine if I like had a smartphone, I could have shot so many cool like projects on it and like the quality of everything would have been so much better. So when Angelica is asking, is that a masking tool on Jordan's right now? Uh, oh, I have selected this. So yeah, technically a masking tool. Um, it, it helps me to just make sure I'm not going crazy with the paint, especially when I'm zoomed all the way out. And um, I'm still at a stage where I'm just trying to figure stuff out. I know we've been in this painting for a while now, but you know, still got still have to find solutions for stuff. So this helps me, and a lot of other artists will use this to just get more control, get sharper lines if they need it. You know, all it's that. Looking gorgeous, though. Thank you. I'm excited to see yours. I, I only see half of it because your layer menu is covering it up, but it looks good so far. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. I Kat actually taught me about how you can um, change the like. I don't even know what this is called. The like. Um, blending mode or whatever oh yeah and change the colors and i'm kind of having fun right now playing around with that and trying to see like the line work i was doing wasn't the actual line work i wanted to do but then every time you play with these it's kind of like fun to just see what um what happens it's almost like a what what little, it's like a surprise and sometimes you like what shows up yeah for sure Oh, Blue Wolf Spirit is asking, what is animation paper? Um, so when you're animating, and DT can correct me if I'm wrong, but when you're animating, typically you don't want the paper to move because everything is supposed to go very seamlessly. So it's basically got these very specific hole punches. Um, most times it'll be like one round one in the center and then two kind of rectangular ones on the side. And it just keeps it from moving whenever you're working. Yeah, it just like if you buy a peg bar, all the peg bars are have like the same punches in it. So you can buy animation paper that has that exact punch um, that the peg bar has, and then you put the animation paper in the peg bar, and then you your stuff won't move like magic. Yeah, animation basically is magic just with artwork. <laughs> yes, and I, and I love animation so much because it's one of the only visual artistic. Um, filmmaking methods where everything has to be imagined, like everything has to be created. You know, yeah. live action, you could go to a park that's already been planted and all that. But animation, everything comes from the mind. I love it. Mm -hmm. Seven Angelic is saying, I love the color of DT's mushrooms. Thank you, Seven Angelic. I'm having a lot of fun playing around with color right now and just trying to block in some color um, with my mushrooms. I think because this is like a imaginary fantasy landscape for me, I want um, it to be kind of silly. Vanessa's saying, me too. Pinkish colors are not my first thought when you say mushrooms, but they look lovely. Thanks so much, guys. Um, I wasn't super sure about how I felt about these mushroom colors, but I am feeling good now that you are all giving me... Ooh, I changed the color of the line to blue, and I am kind of digging it. <laughs> nice. Johnny is saying, Jordan, beautiful atmospheric effect and depth. It's like magic. I agree. Jordan, do you want to explain a little bit? We have a tutorial about what atmospheric perspective is, but do you want to give like a quick um, like one-liner on what atmospheric perspective is? Because we brought it up a few times, and I don't know if everyone knows. Yeah, so atmospheric perspective is the illusion of having things go back into space um, when you're creating artwork. So. If you look out on a mountain range, let's say, things will not be as sharp when they're 20 miles away versus when they're right next to you. You know, it'll be less saturated. It'll be, uh, you know, closer to the sky color because you have things like pollution, air particles, all that stuff blocking you. And so when you're creating that illusion, um, you know, what I typically do is I'll use the same color of the, as the sky to kind of uh, paint over background, uh, the background and uh, make things a little less sharp, um, you know, blur the edges to stuff like this. I could totally blur this mountain out, this mountain edge, but uh, yeah, that's, that's basically it. It's, it's, it's actually pretty simple to, in concept, but it's just challenging to do for every situation sometimes. You gotta think about it. Mm -hmm. That's a great explanation. Thank you, Jordan. Yeah, of course.
wish I had like more time to really think about how I'm doing this because <laughs> this, this is definitely challenging. Yeah, I feel the same way. I'm like, I like what I'm doing, but I'm not convinced that what I'm doing is what I actually want with this piece. But, you know, it's a good exercise to just force yourself to kind of like make decisions. Yeah. We have a comment from Seven and Jet that says, does appropriate keep a record of your color choices? Say if you grab a random one, does it show your more recent choices like other programs? It does, right? Yeah, so if you, uh, right here, there's a little bit of a history bar. It's got the last 10 colors that I've used um, right here. But you can also make your own palettes. So if let's say you like a certain color, you could just plop it in like this. I, I just literally tapped it and now it's there forever. Um, and it comes with a lot of pre-packaged palettes too, which is really convenient, so. Yeah, I've never, all the appropriate palettes I have are um, completely just from Procreate, like I've never downloaded anything. Maybe that's not, oh wait, you're talking about color palettes. I'm talking about brushes, but still, I uh, think I think everything is like what they provide is awesome. Blue is asking me, how did you change the color of the line to blue? Okay, so Kat taught me this. When you're on your layers, if you, there's like a little N right here, I'm gonna tap right there and it opens up the blending modes of each layer. So I changed it from normal to difference and that changed the color. So this, like, if you can see as I'm scrolling and it's so fun, I like just wanna like play with all of them. Mm -hmm. I'll show you what the normal was. This was normal. So this was like the color I actually used for my lines. And then I wanted to just see what would happen if like, you know, I played around with the colors. So you can kind of see, I mean, half of it's covered, but the one I picked, I think was hard. No, it was one of these. So that's how I changed it to blue, um, which is kind of cool because you can test out what another line color would look. I think I'm not gonna actually use this line work at the end, um, but it's cool to just show color relationships this way. But right now I'm just trying to block out um, all the masses of colors and then I'll go in and rework. I'm so used to working traditionally that I'm really like thrown off when I'm working with Procreate and like my um, color making process and how I just approach everything in general. But alas, I'm learning. Yeah, it, it can definitely, there's definitely a learning curve, especially when you're so used to doing everything else but using Procreate. <laughs> So, yeah. you know, I ha I have some sympathy. I understand. <laughs> I have some sympathy. Yeah. Well, I I am I'm, I'm always gonna rub rub it in Claire's face that she deleted that layer one time. It's just it's just funny to me. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> um, W three one five bird says Jordan, when you said the distance takes on the color of the sky, that turned on a light for me. Often I hear distance is more blue, but if the sky is in blue, then that advice doesn't work, right? Yeah, that's that's pretty much true. I mean, oftentimes most skies will have a bluish tint, whether it's more purple or even sometimes leaning towards a, like a bluish green or something like that. Um, but yeah, it's whatever the sky color is. And there's plenty of times where you'll see like a red sky or in Prince of Egypt, they have a yellow sky. If you look in the distance, everything's more yellow. So, you know, it's just the color of the atmosphere that you're going for. That's such a good piece of learning advice. I feel like I just learned something there. Cause I was like, yeah, I mean, I feel like I knew that, but I never really thought about it in terms like that. Yay, I'm, I'm helping. You're a great teacher, Jordan. <laughs> <laughs> I appreciate that. Thank you, DT. <laughs> you are my procreate guru. <laughs> I guess that's what I've become. That is my new title. I don't mind it. It's It's nice. It's a good thing. You're like our, our little procreate wizard. Yeah. There's still so much I need to learn though. Like they've come out with some updates in the last couple of months that are just mind blowing and I haven't had time to really uh, play with them as much as I would like. But one day, one day I will. How often do you just draw for fun in procreate? Cause I mean, I know like this is for the purposes of our tutorial but it is also kind of like 
fun in a sense that it's not like for a client or something. Uh, yeah. But how often would you say you're able to um, just mess around and procreate? Um, just lately, because I've been so busy um, and I work on big files, I haven't been using procreate as much. Uh, typically, though, I'll you know every couple of days I'll just be like, oh, let's you know just sit back on on the couch or on the bed or and just draw some cool stuff. Um, but I don't draw in procreate as much as I used to when I was in school because not part of it's because I'm not traveling so much anymore. Mm. Uh, yeah. Cerulean is ask, is saying I just bought an iPad Air and an Apple Pencil. I was inspired by all the cool art Jordan has shown on here. Now I'm at the beginning of a steep learning curve. Me too, Cerulean. <laughs> I am still at the beginning of a steep learning curve. But that's so awesome that Jordan inspired you. I mean, I'm not yeah, surprised. That's so cool. Thank you for saying that. But it's it's all just about taking it one day at a time. Um, I think what a lot of people, including myself, will fall into is they'll get into this place where it's like, I'm not improving fast enough, and they'll only spend like 45 minutes on it. Mm -hmm. And like, of course, you're not going to develop. Like Kobe Bryant didn't become Kobe Bryant in 45 minutes. You know, like that's just it doesn't happen like that. Art is a constant training, learning, growing type of thing. So just keep that, you know, that mindset of wanting to grow and you will be fine. Yeah, that's great advice. We are all Kobe Bryant in the making. There we go. <laughs> Seven Angelic is asking, is there a masking tool that selects all pixels of one color too? Um, selects all pixels of one color. Uh, I don't know about that. Um, you can, so so there is a selection tool. Um, you can't really see it on my screen, but I use the selection tool up here. And then there's something called automatic on the bottom. Again, the screen is cut off so you can't see it. But when I hit on it, it brings up all of this. And uh, when I scroll my finger across, I don't know if you guys see that blue bar at the top that's moving a little bit, um, but it basically changes how much of the selection there is. And it'll give a number of like threshold is such and such percent. Um, and just play around with that and hopefully that'll select a color. But if you're really concerned about that, I would just have that specific color on a different layer if possible. How many layers do you generally use, Jordan? Um, I try not to have like, two. I mean, I think up to like 15 or 20 sometimes if it's a bigger piece. <laughs> but um, I really, I try and start with as little as possible because it's, it's easier for me to keep track of everything and uh, I don't wanna lose control. But um, I definitely don't just use like one layer. I think one layer yeah. is kind of scary. Um, yeah, I struggle with that because I like there's I want to use multiple layers, so I'm not like I don't know. Sometimes I feel like it's good to have multiple layers because it helps separate things and you can manipulate certain things without affecting others. But then I was just trying to like play with the smudge tool and wanted to smudge this pink of the mushroom with the green of my ground but then they're on two different layers and i was like oh i don't know if i can do that oh yeah if it's on two layers yeah that's uh yeah i mean you can merge them and just yeah and i was like i guess i'll just wait to merge them until like a little bit later because yeah. i'm not really at the texture phase of things i'm still just like blocking out color but oh man Oh, Vanessa is asking or saying, I feel so dumb when I watch Jordan. He's twisting the image and manipulating it like a pro. I think it makes everything look awesome when you don't know what's happening, but the result is starry eyes. I agree. I appreciate that. To be honest, though, like I said a couple minutes ago, I don't really know what I'm doing right now. Um, ordinarily, like I would have done like a whole set of steps, like really refined a thumbnail and really figured out my colors and my shapes and all that. And figuring all that out at once becomes overwhelming. And uh, that's when I tend to get stuck. Um, yeah. And I think that's probably the issue I'm running into right now. You guys might not be able to tell, but, you know, kind of just noodling a lot. <laughs> I'm glad you said that. I feel like I always feel really overwhelmed in these, like, 
streams just because it is like you're figuring out a lot yeah. at once, which is a great like technique. Like it's like a really good exercise, mm -hmm. but it is also stressful. <laughs> yeah, like I feel like the easier thing, there's a difference to me between designing and drawing or painting. You know, like when yeah. we did a caricature stream of the royal family, like there was a little bit of difficulty just trying to figure out like the shapes, but ultimately we had like a really spot on reference and I was like, oh, this is, this is fine. Yeah. But when, but when I'm trying to come up with something off the top of my head or with very little reference, I start getting kind of stuck, you know? Um, I think that's just how it is naturally for artists. I don't know, do you feel that way, DP? Definitely, and I think there's more like, when you're working with multiple references, like you said, there's more thought involved where you have to like work and then rework and be like, is this, you know, are these working together? I think there's a lot more like back and forth, whereas in the caricature, like you said, we're working with a pretty solid reference. There isn't, we're just using with what we, what we have and then exaggerating a little bit. And this, there's like a lot of different moving parts. Mm -hmm. Clara is asking me, DD, why did you pick that spiky plant to place near the mushrooms? Um, I liked the texture of the spiky plant, kind of the same answer I had for this pink mushroom. Um, and I wanted to just break it up and give a little bit more texture. I thought it would just be boring to have like a stream of mushrooms. Um, and it would be fun to have like more interesting textures and shapes together. Um, I'm thinking of making one more, like right down here, perhaps, or something. Um, but right now, I'm just like gonna block in all the colors and then add add more stuff later, maybe. <laughs> also, the like I don't like for the. I think the caricature stream is a great comparison because, like, for that one, I wasn't coloring; I was just working on the line work, and color is something that I struggle with a lot. And um, it helps sometimes too in the thumbnail phase, play around with color or like, I like to like use color swatches and see how they look next to each other and stuff. Um, and in this, the way I'm doing this, just cause of time, I'm just kind of improvising color. So although I'm like, okay, yeah, this could work. Some part of me is like, oh, maybe I don't really like this. Maybe I wanna change the color. So um, it's just a different way of working than I'm used to, which can be a little stressful sometimes. Yeah, I, I understand. Colors is challenging in general. But, mm -hmm. uh, let's see, Seven Angelic, the lighting is looking more and more awesome on Jordan, so you're doing good. I appreciate that. Thank you for the for giving me a little bit of confidence. Cause <laughs> I'm like, Ugh, let's see how this goes. I don't know. Yours is looking awesome, Jordan. You, you have nothing to worry about. Okay. <laughs> me, on the other hand. Have a lot to worry about. Like started over in the stream, though. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm after that comment about you like moving everything. I was like, wow, I'm like, I'm so stuck in this frame. I'm like not moving anything. I'm like, okay, here, I will, I will do this to make myself look cool. Move things around a little bit. Zoom in so you can see some textures. <laughs> You're doing fine. You, you know what it actually kind of feels like? It feels very Dr. Seussy to me. I knew you were going to say that. Everyone says my work looks like Dr. Seuss. I, I like it. I, 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 that's a compliment. But I, I was like, as soon as you were like, you know what it looks like? Because it's the color of choices, too. I always just go for like really like bright, saturated, fun colors. Because like, why not? It's Claire so is asking, Jordan, are you lightening some form in the shadow? Are you lightening some form in the shadow on the big rock? Uh, yes, so I spent a little bit of time just kind of uh, lightening up a couple of things because, um, I mean, it, it's still in the foreground and it is the, it's still the darkest value overall in the piece. So I, instead of making it look like an otherworldly place that just has unrealistic shadows, I was just like, you know, let's just spend some time and really focus on, uh, you know, getting everything to look look right with lighting and shadow because that's i feel like that's what makes or breaks a piece is you know more than color is just is the lighting and shadow working is the value structure okay yeah so yeah just lighting up things here and there but um uh -oh. yeah but yeah i i got some oh the places you'll go uh vibes and i i love that book actually 
So <laughs> well, thank you. I appreciate that comparison. I'm also using this bizarre brush that I just picked and I have no idea what it is just because I was like, whatever. Oh, we have a question actually from Simra that says, what sort of brushes do you use mostly? Are they customs or specific presets? As I just said, I have no idea what brush I'm using. I just picked one for, <laughs> it was like, cool, this seems fine. And I realizing it's a little not great, but whatever. But um, Jordan, what brushes do you use? Too many. Um, I actually don't even know what all these brushes do. Uh, some of them I've bought from other people who make Procreate brushes, but I don't know if you guys know this, but you can also import Photoshop brushes into Procreate now too. So some of them are actually Photoshop brushes that I got from other places. Um, right now I'm using one called the Sick Blender, which is one I got from my grad school, which is really, really nice. Um, and, you know, it's, it's basically what it says, Sick Blender. So, you know, nice soft square brush. Um, the harder I press though, it can get a nice crisp edge. Cool. Yeah. After your comment about the sky, I'm like, ooh, what color should my sky be? Jill is saying, so is your shadow considered cool, Jordan? Red seems warm to me, but your highlights are yellow. I have trouble with warm and cool. That's a really good question. I know a lot of people have trouble with warm and cool. Yeah. Um, so the way I think about warm and cool is um, if you think about the color wheel, actually, we can pull it up because we have one. Right? <laughs> so we have this color wheel, right? Blue, as you know, is the coldest color that we could possibly get. And the natural complement to blue would actually be closer to orange, right? That's about as warm as you can go. When you start going into red, that's when it can start shifting into the purple zone. So you have this nice medium of the orange, yellow, red kind of zone, or even orange, red. Um, and so that's how I start considering it. With my painting in particular, I pictured the light or the sunset as being like a yellowish orange. And so I'm using the complement of that for the shadows. Um, and uh, let's see, let me just make sure I mention the question. Red seems to me. Yeah, and, and here's the thing about color. Everything is, uh, is relative. You know, you could have a, a gray feel warm in the midst of a bunch of blues. You know, it doesn't have to be a super saturated color for it to feel warm. It just depends on the piece that you're going for. Um, I hope that makes sense. Made sense to me. Okay, cool. <laughs> <laughs> I'm Jordan's hype woman, basically. <laughs> you know, I, I need that sometimes. I really do, because I'm like, I hope everything I said wasn't just like me wasting, wasting <laughs> <anymore."> <laughs> I do that too on the streams. I feel like I'm always on the stream like, did anything I say make sense just now? Yeah. That's like my go-to line. Yeah, I, I always go like, does that make sense? Whenever I'm explaining or teaching anything. Just, cause I, I don't know, maybe it's part of it's because when I was in high school, I would just assume that the teachers knew I understood what they meant. Cause um, y you know, I would just, I was a quiet kid. And if you don't say anything, where, why would they explain it further? Cause they think you would get it. So maybe it's trauma from that or something. Yeah. <laughs> Trauma. Um, Deep D, you definitely make sense. Thank you so much, Ayan. <laughs> <laughs> I need that validation sometimes. <laughs> See, just because we're on YouTube doesn't mean we don't have our own little insecurities. Oh. A plethora of them, if I speak for myself. <laughs> Your complimentary colors little spiel has inspired me to be a little bit, go a little funky with my colors and poke yeah. around. Yeah, girl. I mean, that's funny coming from me because my colors are already so funky, but. I'm going to funk it up even more. <laughs> there you go. I love it. And that's a really awesome sentence. <laughs> I'm listening to Funky Town. Town. I love that song. <laughs> right? It's a bop. 
Our prof says, how do you, the two of you handle artistic insecurity? Sometimes it could be debilitating for many artists. You want to start that or you want me to start that? Uh, you go. Okay. Um, artistic insecurity. Um, well, first off, I try not to put my worth in my work, if that makes sense. You know, I feel like a lot of people will fall into the this whole of saying like if i produce a bad piece of art then i am suddenly worth less as a human being and that doesn't make any sense it's not right and it's it's toxic it's a toxic way to think and um the other thing that i also do is i look back on my old work if i can you know most of us have instagrams or you know at least a folder of our old drawings and stuff and when you look back to a year two three five years ago and see the improvement then you, if you, then you know that you're going to keep going. You're going to constantly be improving. So uh, that's the way I think about it. It's it's a marathon, not a sprint. Yeah, I love that. I I feel like I'm just going to echo most of what you said, but realizing that it's not a competition, and if anything, it's like the point is to see growth in your own practice, and not. Com I feel like for me, comparing myself to others has always been kind of where I find myself hung up so trying not to do that and trying to realize that the journey is like your own journey and not anyone else's and it's really about your growth um and what other people are doing doesn't really matter you can always get inspired by it but you shouldn't compare yourself to what other people are doing because everyone's so different um but you know having a good community i think is really important to me because sometimes you might not see your growth but your community will mm -hmm. And so having people who are really supportive and give you the kind of feedback you're looking for and remind you of like those things, I think is really important yeah. for, for me. Yeah, there, there's a quote, I can't remember who said it, but I, I remember I glued it in my sketchbook one time when I was in high school and it said, every artist is first an amateur. And I was like, yeah. that's it, that's it. <laughs> I wish I knew who said it, I feel bad now. But yeah, someone can look it up and you put it in the comments and remind me if you someone want. Someone very wise. Yes, clearly very wise. I mean, like for me, I feel like just watching my old Procreate streams, like my very first one, which is probably one of my first times ever working on Procreate in like a proper manner to now I feel like really proud of my understanding of just using it and all this stuff. So that's like a good way of me feeling motivated for myself and not feeling discouraged when I'm looking at Jordan's and having him be a pro. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, okay, I'm pro progressing in my own small way, in my own. Um, Sinjo Love is saying, hi, it's my first time catching the live. I've been watching Art Prof for a while now. Hi, it's so nice of you to catch us live. Thank you so much for joining. And we hope you join us for many, many more. Yes because we have lots of cool content to share with you guys. Simrod says, random question, is art school worth it if you have decent skills and well network with communities? Mm. Um, you, you, want, you want to go or you want me to go? Uh, I think there are always pros to art school because you're ne always going to meet new people in that community and learn more in it and you have access to a lot of great facilities and people are like being a student but it's also a ton of money and there's so many really wonderful self-taught artists and if you already have a community and skills that you're working on it's really about your work ethic and you putting yourself out there and art school is not accessible to everybody and that's why art prof exists as well um, but there are so many resources so if you can't go to art school, I don't definitely don't think that it's a reason for not being able to um, be an artist because a lot of people think that and it's absolutely not true. Uh, what do you think, Jordan? Yeah, I agree completely. Um, the thing with art school is it's meant to prepare you to get a job. If you are in a situation where you have the skills to keep up with people in your network or your industry or whatever, and you have a connection, then go for it. You know, people like like myself, I had to go to art school twice. I struggled that much. <laughs> and so I had to figure it out. Um, 
and it's it's worked for me but there are plenty of artists i see on instagram all the time who are like 17 18 years old and they're bananas they're so good and i'm like Psh, they could they could just get hired at nickelodeon right now you know <laughs> that's just so it just depends on the scenario but i definitely um don't think it's worth putting yourself in uh in a precarious situation with finances or whatever if if you have access to getting a job you know yeah i think it's really important that you said like really at the end of the day your portfolio and you being like a good kind person who is easy to work with is what's going to get you in the door and get you a job and keep you getting work like if you have an awesome portfolio and you know people who can maybe open some doors for you you can go far with just that so use what you have and don't stress just because people went to art school you those are the stories that you always hear and it's not the only way to do things. Yeah, it, if, if it helps uh, the issue even more, when I was hired to work with DreamWorks, they never asked me once where I went to school. They, yeah. they never brought it up. They were just like, we like your portfolio. You want to work with us? And I was like, Psh, do I? And so then that's how it worked. But they never asked me about my time at RISD or the Academy of Art. Even though I had great times at both of those schools, they didn't really care that much. <laughs> so. Yeah. And also, I think it's worth noting, like, I rarely get asked for a resume nowadays. People just look at my portfolio and sometimes they look at a resume, but more to just see that I have worked for other people. But like now my portfolio kind of speaks on that level, too, because it just shows that I have like it's a lot of client based work. So you are seeing in the portfolio just like clients I've worked for. But people rarely ask for a resume they just want to see my work and meet with me and if they like me they're like okay cool i can't say that for everyone but that's been my personal experience yeah. three and five birds says i'm not insecure from comparing myself to others i freak out thinking i might die before i reach a level i'm internally satisfied with have you seen the new Pixar movie, Soul? I have not, I have not. It's kind of about that, basically, like someone f feeling that they haven't reached their full potential and being scared that they're gonna die or that they kind of like, they do die. I'm not doing any spoilers. And then kind of coming to terms with that. Yeah. My um, my teacher, he he always makes this comparison. Uh, he t he, his favorite musician is Prince, right? And he says, Prince was like 56 or 57 when he died or something around that age. And he had come out with 30 albums and mastered all these um, uh, instruments and was, you know, he was phenomenal. But what would happen if he were to live for like 500 years? Like how much better would he, like what more, more would he have done or any one who was phenomenal for that matter? Um, even he, how Miyazaki deals with that. Like he's often, <laughs> I often see memes of him like talking about if I fail at this movie, my career will be a sham or something like that. He always <laughs> say stuff like that. And um, uh, I feel like death is one of those things that, or in not reaching your full potential is not something that we should concern ourselves with because that's pretty far out of our control. Um, you know, like, when it's our time to go, it's our time to go. So that's that's about it. Until then, I'm just going to do what I can to improve. There's always going to be someone that's better than you, and there's always going to be someone that is more accomplished and you can compare yourself to for, like, ages. But um, that's just the way life is. And once you realize that that's just what it's going to be and your accomplishments aren't any less valuable, um, yeah, you gotta just work with what you got, but it's totally, that's a very real fear. I have that too. W315 is asking, there should just be a finishing school where you learned how to be a good team player and have a professional ethos no matter which career. I agree. So many people just lack the basic skills of like working with other people and being kind and being a team player and having, yeah, like you say, absolutely. Sometimes I think that working like a service job 
<laughs> is kind of like that, like, yeah, you know? Yeah, I, I forget who I was talking with. Maybe it was Clara, but <laughs> we were talking about, uh, you know, people having to work in, like you said, the service industry or food service or something like that. Because when you get that experience, you start learning a lot about how people operate and how to treat people and how not to treat people. Um, you know, because I've worked retail for a couple of years while I was in grad school and I saw a lot of stuff <laughs> and not everybody was very nice. So. Agree. Yeah. People are definitely not very nice. I, yeah, my days in the service industry or even just being a teacher and dealing with like parents, you know, yeah. really opens your eyes to a whole lot. I'm cool on that. We need nice people in the world. <laughs> we do. We need a lot more nice people in the world. Make everything so much easier. Angel is saying, Titi, I love the color scheme you have going now in this piece. Thank you so much. I'm, yeah, I'm really, I'm really happy with my process and the reworking that I did. I'm feeling much better about this piece. Oh my God, I choked on my own spit just now and it sounded like I was about to cry. <laughs> I feel so happy about my progress. <laughs> um, but no, I do. I, I feel really happy with, I'm like, I think I learned a lot while making this and I'm still not like, 100% sure if I'm totally stoked about it, but where it's at right now, I, I feel good. So thank you very much. That's the whole point though, just learning. That's that's the fun part. Um, <laughs> Sorry, my doorbell just rang. I don't need to. <laughs> I, was like, I thought that was a fire alarm. No, it's my doorbell. It's probably a package. I just took, I, I love doing this when I'm doing Procreate because it's something that you can't do when you're working traditionally is like taking off the layer that has like the line work on it and just like seeing what you were doing without that frame. Oh yeah. Kind I of do fun. That time. It's so satisfying. Or, or the playback video. That's my favorite. What playback video? What? You don't know about this? No. Okay. Well. Now you will see. Okay, so if you go up to the wrench icon um, and you type video, you can hit time lapse replay. Sometimes it might, it may or may not be on for you. Yeah, yours is on. So you can just tap time lapse replay and it has the whole process recorded for you. Oh my gosh, and this includes the process that I did with Cat. That's wild. Yep. So, and you can scroll your finger to, you know, go to a certain point on the video. Oh my gosh, what? Yep, and then this is then blowing can, my literal mind. And then you can export that and upload it to a place like Instagram so people can see your whole process. Oh, wow. <laughs> you wow. Know, you know it's so funny, actually. Kat, like, I guess last week discovered this and she messaged me. She's like, oh my gosh, this is so freaking cool. <laughs> I was like, oh yeah, you didn't know about that? <laughs> Wow, this is so wild to watch. Oh my goodness. Okay, I'm gonna watch this later. I really like my piece. Yeah, I noticed Clara wrote that I kind of love your piece without the lines. I also kind of love my piece without the lines. It feels very painterly. Um, and I feel like I could go in and add some, some more like line work in in a tonal sense, mm -hmm. but yeah, I think I'm gonna keep working on it like this. I like it both ways, honestly. It's 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 really, man, just when I think that I hate, but then I love like this line, this, maybe make the lines more transparent. That's a good idea. Like, I was like, even changing them to orange, make them a little less prominent and. You know, um... You, if you kept your lines on normal, uh, the, the layer, uh, oh my goodness, the layer mode on normal, you can mm -hmm. actually color the lines specifically and not worry about drawing them like anywhere else. Do you know that? Like you can go over the lines? Yeah. Color? Yeah. So let's say, so, all right, let me turn my painting off and just give you an example. So let's say I have uh, this mark right here and it's this brown. If you select on the layer and you just do alpha lock 
or you can swipe with two fingers to the right on the layer. Um, so it has a checkerboard. Mm -hmm. You can color on top of it with another color and not worry about it going off of that. Oh my goodness, you're blowing my mind. <laughs> <laughs> so, so you don't have to worry about that anymore. You just like keep it on normal and just color the lines however you want. Wow, okay, wait, so I, I tap, oh my gosh. Yep, and then go to alpha lock. Wowie, yep. zowie. Okay, I have it on a different mode. And then make sure your layer mode's on normal. Yeah. Normal. This is, wow, this is the best day of my life, you guys. <laughs> I'm learning so much. Jordan is my procreate king. <laughs> Someone said earlier that I should have a crown. Maybe, maybe, maybe that should be in the. That should have been the uh, raffle. <laughs> Give me appropriate crown. <laughs> uh, Ayan is saying, "Deep D, I think adding some ambient occlusion or deepening some of the shadows in the shadows would help." I think that it just needs more contrast. Yeah, I agree. I think that I'm I'm working on like building the contrast right now. I like. I'm not great at just like going in with the dark colors, but I do agree. I think just having some more contrast would be would be great. Wow, Jordan, you should teach a master class. You know, there are people who are far more qualified <laughs> to do that. But when I start, maybe when I start knocking out these environments a little bit more, that that'll work a little easier for me. Cause I still still struggle, you know. You know, you know what I want to do, actually? I want to practice doing Bob Ross studies and procreate. Just like wow. just watching him go, because he's so fast. Like, regardless of what people say about whether or not his work is corny or whatever, he's so fast. <laughs> and that speed is indispensable. Um, Sinja says, are you painting with a drawing tablet or a screen tablet? Uh, both of us are using an iPad Pro. Um, and pro the Procreate app, so, oh, sorry, I tilted the drawing, but um, yeah, it's you can draw directly onto the screen. Yeah, it's much, it's almost like a Cintiq, but it's it's much easier in my opinion than using like um, a white Wacom tablet where you have to like look up, but draw down here. Clara is asking, Jordan, is that a city in the background? Yeah, a little, little one horse town type thing. It might be a little, Actually, the buildings are probably a little too tall to make it realistic, so maybe more like that. <laughs> but um, yeah, I'm just trying to figure it out. I'm not 100% sure what's going on. With this. We all... I hope I'm not making anyone like motion sick by just me going <laughs> off, <laughs> like zooming in and out and twirling things. I think we balance each other out well because mine has, I'm not moving at all. Okay, good. You guys get sick, look at, look at, just stare at BGs and don't look at mine. Yeah. <laughs> or just switch your tab for a second. Yeah. <laughs> I wonder if anyone has ever gotten like motion sick from that. I'm going to create like a dome instead. Yeah. Just make it easier. Just make this uh, one. Big dome shape with some buildings. One thing I'm really proud of my progress for right now is that I am doing a very good job of remembering what layer, like I should be drawing on a specific layer. <laughs> Cause I would always mess that up and be drawing on another layer. And then at the end, everything would just be confusing. But I have been good with keeping with my layers this this stream. You know, that's, a, that's actually a, a huge thing because one of the curses of digital is just not uh, not remembering what layer you're working on and everything screws up. Like I've had that happen to me so many times and it's brutal. I hate it. Uh, Whoa, Jordan, that was so satisfying watching you squish the building to make them shorter. Oh yeah, it's a little fun feature. It, it's again, it's cut off on the screen, but you can change anything um, you want with the uh, selection and uh, with the selection tool. So if you hit this arrow on the bottom, it'll say freeform, transform, uniform, distort, or warp. So if I want to warp it, I could do something like this. 
you know, and uh, that would be a ridiculous building to paint, but I could do it. Whoa, that looks so cool. Actually, it looks like a spaceship. It looks like a, it looks like the, I don't know what it looks like, but it looks like something cool. Like the Guggenheim. Oh yeah, I guess so. Uh, yeah, so I could do that if I wanted, or if I wanted to distort it and just pull it this way, I could totally do that. Make this like giant, giant structure. Um, uniform will just make it consistent but larger, and then freeform, which is what I did earlier, can stretch it however I want. And you can also rotate it. So if I went upside down building for absolutely no reason. I can do it because it's my art. It's your landscape. It's whatever you want. Exactly. It's the Bob Ross coming out of it. <laughs> Just make it whatever you want. Happy little landscapes. Right. Everyone needs a friend. Vanessa is telling us that there's a documentary about Bob Ross. He did all his pieces twice. There was a lot of work behind the scenes. I didn't know that, but he did all his pieces twice. Did you know that? Yeah. I, um, he he had to do it for i think even three times in some cases like he would do one for practice and then one for the show and then maybe like one for like charity so he would do them each like two or three times that's incredible and apparently he i think he painted like a whole series or a whole season in like a day or two like over a weekend wow just nuts and then he would spend the rest of the time like touring around the world like doing little art demos for people and stuff See, this is why you can't compare yourselves to others. If I compare myself to Bob Ross, I would feel like so awful all the time. <laughs> Bob is, oh my goodness. I should have, if I had known we were going to talk about Bob Ross, I would have worn his shirt today because I have two of them. Do you? Yeah, I have two Bob Ross shirts and two socks with Bob Ross on them. He's a cutie. <laughs> yeah, he's so much fun. You just keep, I, I don't understand why someone would not like this man. But, uh, he's so good. He's just yeah. a good heart. Yeah. I remember I was going through walking through Target a couple months ago, and they had like a whole game based on him. It was like a type of Pictionary, and I was like, "Wow, they are really marketing off this guy." <laughs> he's <laughs> really. dead, right? Yeah, he's been dead since like 1995. Okay, that's what I thought. Uh, Nicole is asking, "Do you use Procreate for animation, or is Rough Animator better?" I personally use. Uh, Photoshop for animation, or I do everything traditionally, like by hand, um, on paper or a stop motion. I think that there is a like great use of animation, and or Procreate is great for animation. I just don't personally know how. We actually do a, have a Procreate tutorial, which is awesome. Um, and Clara's on that one and learns how to do like a ball bounce, which is really great. But uh, I say use whatever works well for you. I want to get better with animation and procreate. Anything. Yeah, I, I was literally about to say that exact same sentence. <laughs> <laughs> we are reading each other's minds, Jordan. Yes. Ugh. It's so funny because you'd think that if I had three hours to draw a little mushroom landscape, it would be like, yeah, easy peasy. But I'm like not even 10% done with this. Digital paintings take a long time. Like even I've done master studies that took me like an hour and I'm still like not fully happy with the result. So yeah, maybe one of these days we should just do a master study. I think that would be helpful for everyone. I think that would be really helpful because then I could just focus on the like learning what brushes I'm using and like all these things that I feel like I'm I need to learn but it's hard to do when I'm like also trying to make an imaginary landscape I think that's a great idea Jordan yeah Clara you hear that let's write it down <laughs> she hears it all she may not be here with us visually but she is with us emotionally I think I messed up my clouds, actually. Um, if I get the opacity a little bit, it's more color. What percentage done are you, Jordan? <laughs> um, <laughs> uh, I guess it depends on if we're assuming that I'd be posting this online somewhere. <laughs> um, 
Well, if like, if this was a client work, for example, and they were like, how many more months or days or whatever do you need, Jordan? What would your answer be? Um, I would probably need another week or two. Um, Cause I'm just like, there's just so many things that I just haven't resolved. And um, like, it's kind of tricky making that guess. Cause I'm like, I don't know. It's, I don't know. I, I feel like I would make a lot of changes to it if I really like sat and thought about it for a while too. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's why so, I don't just sit and think very often. Yeah, so so certainly not a high percentage. So I can say that for sure. Jaden is saying, I missed the stream that had all of you in it. I'll watch it later though. Oh no, that was last night. You should definitely watch it. It's on our channel. It was a really fun stream. We all just talked and Clara said that she was going to kill Jordan or some crazy thing. And yeah, uh, yeah it was it was a lot of fun. Yeah, except for that one part, because you see my face, I'm like, <gasps> what did I do? I thought it was my face. I was so confused. I was like, how did we get here? How did yeah, we get to the sacrifice? Yeah, I was like, thank you for backing me up. Actually, all the TAs were like, what the heck? <laughs> You're like, no, we must protect our Jordan. Yes, thank you. I like living. Living is cool. Clara is our, is our art mom, but then sometimes she she just does things where we're like, what? <laughs> you, would, <laughs> you would sacrifice her blood? <laughs> <laughs> what? <laughs> Just want to bring this up real quick. Jaden says that's hilarious. That sounds hilarious. It's hilarious until it's said about you. <laughs> then it becomes kind of startling. <laughs> Comes a little scary. Yeah. Ethan was like, I'm gonna send a bodyguard to your house, Jordan. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I was like, um, I'm not loving this. Because Clara gets these ideas and we're like, ha ha ha, it's crazy. And then she does them. And we're like, what? I mean, not human sacrifice, but like, she has big dreams and she accomplishes them. And this is not a big dream of hers that I uh, want accomplished. Me, me too. We are one in the same, DP. We are one in the same. <laughs> I hope there's more like us. <laughs> <laughs> we can tweak the Jordan sacrifice so he just donates blood to the YouTube gods. That sounds just as creepy. Yeah, like, oh. I just feel like blood, any just body situation, like, no. Can I, can I just like donate some art instead? Yeah, <laughs> like, can we make? I think that'd be easier, <laughs> less painful. 315 Bird says, art mom, don't eat your babies. Exactly, thank you. Thank you. <laughs> I have to protect myself too, because you never know who she's gonna come for next. I know, right? We I didn't know it was like that. We just, you know, it's up for grabs now, apparently. We're all just <laughs> sensible. <laughs> the tables have turned. Right? Blue is saying, okay, so let's all donate to Prof who doesn't have the tea selling their blood to keep our prof growing. Yeah, please, guys, if you can donate, we have a Patreon and one-time donations and super chats and that will keep Jordan's blood in his body and his body only. Where it belongs. Where it belongs. <laughs> Vanessa is saying, I think we can make a drawing of Jordan and sacrifice that instead of him. Win-win for the YouTube gods and keep the real Jordan teaching us. Yes, that would be great. If you've actually been drawing along with us, we can all at the end go to Discord and sacrifice them all on Discord. Or if you want to draw us a drawing, I think sacrificing some drawings could uh, could be great. But draw along with us in any media and post what you create in our Art Prof Discord in the hashtag Artalongs channel, which Jordan and I will be in actually pretty shortly. Yep. You know, thing I was like nervous coming onto the stream because I really wasn't happy with what I did with Kat, and now I'm like, I'm like feeling it a little bit more. I'm still not like stoked, but things are looking up. Yeah, 
I'm, and I learned such cool things from Jordan today. I'm so glad I could teach you. Yeah. I know, I should just like, keep you in my pocket, Jordan. I feel like I just need, I need you at any given moment. I guess that's what my phone is. I could just text you and be like, help. <laughs> you could do that. You could totally do that anytime. Thank you. I will, now that you've said that, you are in a bad place because I will. <laughs> I no, will. Just, I will now that you. <laughs> no, it's fine. I'm just gonna send memes all the time, though. So just be ready for that. Oh, I love memes. <laughs> Please send me all the memes. I on Instagram, I love when people <laughs> just send me funny videos or memes. I'm like, this is the best. Like, yeah. I love that you see something silly or ridiculous, and you're like, I should send this to Deep D. That's like the biggest compliment. I have, Everyone send me memes. Yeah, I have this thing where I just have like the first. 20 people my Instagram message are just people that I've sent memes to all the time. <laughs> Clara saying, DJ, I love the bottom of that big mushroom. Thank you. Yeah, I feel like, I mean, I had no idea what brush I was using and stuff, but I feel like I finally figured out how to work it and the opacity. It's so difficult working digitally. And I think the idea of like changing the line opacity and the color, like it all, it all came together in much better of a way than I thought. Deep, do you think there's a difference between drawing with Kat and drawing with Jordan? Has the drawing partner change influenced your piece? Um, sometimes I think that like, I feel like with Jordan, because he, I mean, Kat's really knowledgeable on Procreate too, but with Jordan, I feel like I ask more questions because um, I know that he knows so much. But for me, I didn't feel like the difference was the partner I feel like it was just the amount of time I spent on the piece like with Kat this isn't like my first go um and with Jordan I've now had some more time some more time to think and some more time to think of even like questions I would have I changed the brush I was using I changed the composition so there was a lot of changes that I made so and and yeah Jordan's a great teacher Kat's a great teacher um <laughs> I'm just like the appropriate baby that's just like help please <laughs> mom and dad <laughs> Nothing wrong with that, though. Yeah, I mean, we're teachers, but we're also students. We are lifelong learners. Yep. Yeah. All right. So, guys, if you want to join us, please join us in the Art Prop Discord in the hashtag ArtAlongs uh, channel. The Discord invite link is in the YouTube description below. Jordan and I will be hanging out over there, looking at everything you guys made, posting about us, and just having a fun little party please subscribe to our YouTube channel. And I also wanted to give a big shout out to all our Patreon supporters. Thank you so much for your donations. And oh my God, thank you for the super chat that just came in. We will not be sacrificing Jordan. We thank also you, have our second page of Patreon supporters finally, which is so exciting, but it's only three people. So please, if you would like join our Patreon and your name will be put up there and that could be so cool. Join us on the Discord after this. Jordan and I will be hanging out there. Thank you guys so much for tuning in and watching us draw. I'm really happy with mine. I think Jordan, yours looks great. Thank you. I'm like, eh. <laughs> I'm like, eh, I'm mine, but. <laughs> bye bye. <laughs>